My name is Simon and this is an introduction to how to build a racing car. In this first episode I'll be showing you how the bodywork was designed and we will start to build the bodywork plug. First though, a quick introduction to the project. I started racing carts in 2010 while getting my degree in mechanical engineering. During this time I got experience building a car as part of the University of New South Wales Formula OCE team. I did some endurance kart racing as well which was an absolute blast. Some races lasted as long as 8 hours for our team of 3 drivers. Then I decided to have a go at car racing. I chose Formula V as it was affordable and the quality of racing looked very good. After two years of racing in a leased Stinger, I decided the best way forward would be to own my own car. I had a few options in mind, buying an engine to run in a leased chassis, buying a second hand car, buying a rolling chassis and an engine separately or building a car from scratch, which at the time I didn't really consider too seriously but it was on my mind. At the time I thought it would be too expensive and too difficult to do this in a reasonable amount of time. I didn't want to take any more than a year off from racing. I couldn't help playing around and doing a number of designs though, each time iterating closer to something that I was happy with. Around the beginning of 2015 a car came onto the market. It had been wrecked during the previous season but the engine was known to be a peach and it had all of the various bits and pieces I'd need to build my own car. I bought it, moved into a place with a garage, bought the other tools and bits and pieces I'd need and started learning to use them. My father also offered to help and use his garage for the project. Without this help I reckon I would have taken another year to build the car. One thing that made this project possible was being able to use SolidWorks, a 3D CAD package in which I designed the car. This was kindly provided for this project by Intercad and you'll see just how important it was over the course of these videos. The car simply couldn't have been as complex, as refined, as cheap or built as quickly as it was without this tool. It's also able to produce these rendered videos straight from the model which is a nice bonus. All up the design and preparation took about 6 months from the end of 2014 to May of 2015. This only left about 10 months to actually build the car if it was going to be ready for the 2016 racing season. With my father's workshop and my own available, I planned to build the chassis and bodywork, the two largest jobs, in parallel. The first thing that we started was the bodywork plug. This was an exact replica of the body of the car from which moulds would be created. These moulds would then be used in turn to produce the fiberglass bodywork. I looked at a few construction methods before settling on a combination of wood and high density foam which seemed to provide the best compromise between cost, ease of manufacture and quality. The bodywork itself went through many iterations before I came up with the final design. I used SolidWorks a lot as part of my job but I'm not typically drawing smooth curvaceous shapes like this so I had to learn by doing in this case. I was also figuring out how I'd build it as I drew it. The limitations of my chosen construction method actually had a large influence on the design itself. I kept the shape as much as possible to simple curves that could be made from bent wood and I limited the curved shapes to things that could be cut from a block using a straight cutter. I got some guidance from a member of the Formula SAE team I was part of back in university, a guy called Kyle who now runs his own consultancy, JKF Aero. As a side note, he recently built his own car, an off-road racing buggy. He ran some simulations and his feedback started to change the direction I was taking the overall car's shape in. The side pods are probably the most striking change he suggested. Their tall and narrow shape is intended to bleed what's called the boundary layer from the surface of the car. This would leave the free stream of air to flow around the rear of the car. The turbulent layer of air close to the car would have resulted in more drag uh, behind the car. Most Formula V cars don't enclose the engine as it is air cooled so you can't really just put a radiator in a convenient location and call it a day. You need to make sure that the engine gets enough air over it to stay cool. These are the intended flow paths for the air. I'll use ducting to direct the air as necessary to the carburetor, the fan inlet, the oil cooler and the engine heads. The air is then directed out two holes in the rear. This is a picture of me racing a Stinger which is a Formula V car that's currently quite successful in Australia. When comparing the shape of my car against the Stinger, the differences in shape become quite apparent. I've managed to reduce the overall height of my car, enclosing the engine and enclosing the roll hoop to reduce the drag. There will be some cooling challenges to face with this design, but if it's successful, the reduction in drag should make the work worthwhile. One great advantage of having the car completely designed in SolidWorks was that I was able to make changes to improve the visibility from the cockpit even going so far as to place other cars around my car to make sure that I would be able to see them clearly. The shape of the upper bodywork was dictated by this and ultimately there were flow on effects to other parts of the design such as the chassis to accommodate these requirements. 
Once the design was ready, I started to draw the plug itself. I started with the wood and used a similar technique to one which boat builders use, with bulkheads supporting an outer wooden skin, which is conformed in shape to those bulkheads. Any large flat surfaces would be built this way. I left gaps in the plug where more complicated curves or shapes existed. I then drew in these pieces out of foam building blocks and cutting them to create the required shape. Each foam piece was essentially constructed in SolidWorks in exactly the same as I would create it in real life. Finally, I had to convert the three-dimensional drawings into two-dimensional drawings that I could use in the workshop. The wooden parts were easily drawn up on a number of separate drawings, the foam blocks took a little bit more time and creativity to produce. The foam drawings needed to be simple enough that I could create each piece with a ruler, pen and a hot wire cutter. The wooden bulkheads were the first pieces to be cut from a thick sturdy MDF. These were easily marked up using a pencil, set, square and ruler and we achieved a good degree of accuracy with the bandsaw. If I were to do this again, I'd get these wooden parts cut on a CNC cutter. It's not that expensive and it would achieve a much more accurate outcome in less time. Ultimately though, I was pretty happy with what we achieved using these simple hand tools. Next was the rear tailboard, which was cut from a thin MDF. This also served as a stiffener for the entire bodywork plug, preventing the bulkheads from bending forwards or backwards once the braces that spanned them were put in. A curved guide piece was attached to the tailboard to give the top wooden panel the correct curvature and shape. After this we started to attach the pieces one by one to a thick wooden base. The thick board was added underneath what would eventually become the cockpit cutout. Next we printed full scale templates for the front bodywork guides which sit underneath the surface of the plug. These ensure the wooden skin has the correct shape. This all took place over such a small period of time that I was still getting feedback from Kyle as I was building the plug. The profile on the front of the body changed overnight which required some late drawing changes to get the desired outcome. The front sides of the plug were cut from 6mm MDF then glued and screwed into place. The rear sides were done in a similar fashion, first full scale templates were printed out to cut the guide pieces before thin wood was cut and bent over the top to provide the skin. Top front and rear sections plus some smaller side panels were added to the plug. And that's the wood base completed for the bodywork plug. Next time we work on the plug, I'll show you how I cut and filled the gaps with a high density foam which produced the more complicated curves for the shape. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, feel free to subscribe to see more as they come out. Also follow me on Twitter or Facebook where I'm uploading pictures of the build as it was completed a year ago. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.